Hey everyone, NWA Prepper here. So recently I have been asked and have asked a lot of questions about radio communications, particularly amateur radio or ham radio. Um, for those of you that follow the channel, I took a class. Oh, it's been, it's been a few weeks, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and I did not do very well. I was not prepared for it. The class that I took was, e even the, the club that sponsored it were not pleased with the instructor. That is not why I didn't pass. I didn't pass because I wasn't prepared, which I'm remedying because I want to pass it. I think it's important. So why do I think it's important? The ability to communicate in a format other than cell phones is something that I use every single day. I mean, there's three radios to my right. There's a work radio. There's two, I mean, with two work radios for different jobs. And then, then we have a CB in here. We would have a ham radio in there if I would get my license. My POV, or my personally owned vehicle, does have a ham radio in there that currently I can only listen. The more that I learn about the Imager radio service, the more I learn that there are connections that can be made, there is news that can be shared, that is way, way easier to get than Google even. Uh, there, there are going to be communication and conversations had that you can hear from all over the world from outer space, I mean, and all the all the the technical mumbo jumbo that you hear and you see on amateur radio lists or on their sites and stuff, it's all great. But how does that pertain to you as as a everyday preparedness minded individual? The ability to listen to news, let's say, let's take a storm, a severe weather event. To be able to be on the same channel and listening to the storm spotters, that means you're hearing it as it's happening. You're not having to wait for it to go from a storm spotter to a collection site from that collection site where they put it on a map and they send that map to the National Weather Service who sends it out to your local news. You're hearing they're on County Road 36 and they are getting heavy hail and they see a funnel clap. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't get any easier or better than listening to that. That's one thing. The ability to listen to, directly listen to communications from all over your region are really important. So why not just get a scanner or have something with scanning capabilities, right? Well, if in an emergency, you're going to be able to communicate. You're going to be able to pick up a microphone and go, Hey, this is, you know, whatever your call sign is, if you have one, or if you don't, you're going to be able to go, Hey, this is Billy Bob. I'm over here in, in Peterville and we've got X, Y, Z happening, you know, don't come this way because there's a giant fire or whatever. You, I mean, you can use your imagination on things like that. The ability to change frequencies. Where if you're on a GRMS or an FRMS or FRS radio, like from Walmart or a Bass Pro Shop or one of those places, they're limited in range, they're limited in wattage, and they're also limited to those set channels. Now, there's some secrets and things you can do amongst those. I'm not saying that. But to have an amateur radio that you can program to anything in the UHF or VHF range with just a couple buttons, all you have to do is, is have a list or program them in the radio and have a list, have both, of the local repeaters, the local emergency channels. There's national preparedness channels. There's national national defense. There's national, you know, there's all kinds of local and national channels that are going to spew good information that you need to hear. And if you have anything to contribute to that, it would be wonderful for you to have that capabilities too. 
We're all nosy in our own way and having the technology that is inexpensive and to get right now, it's super cheap. You can get those and you can get a basic radio. You can study harder than I did for the test, which wouldn't take much. I didn't study much at all. And you can get a call sign that you can practice and you can make connections today with people all over your region or depending on how much you get involved into it, all over your region, all over the country and build those networks, those communication lines for when times are rough, you'll, you'll be more informed than everyone else. And at the very least, you'll be informed much faster and much more directly if you have radio communication capabilities. GRNS, FRS, CBs are great. They're very limited in range and they're very limited in capabilities. Uh, so look at your radio communication or your, you know, if all you have are two tin cans and some string, it's not much more expensive to get one of these almost disposable amateur radios. Uh, there's links all over the place on where you can study the questions. There's only 400, 400 possible questions on this test for technician level. And there's there's pre-test where you take the test, it's the actual questions and the actual answers. They tell you what you got wrong and you go back and when you can pass that with 80, 85%, you'll be able to pass the test. They offer them all over the place. Uh, you know, if you, if you can't Google it and you're interested in it, send me a message at nwaprepper.com and I will help you find a local club that will help you do that. And I am not a ham operator yet, but I think it's so important. The more I learn about it, the more I, I think the capabilities are, are paramount. They're life and death. Let's get ready. <laughs>